We'll let him walk around a little bit, sniff some things. Then again, I'm gonna send him from a distance. Legend Kennel. Good boy. Hi, Kat here from Standing Stone Kennels and I've got Legend with me today to show you and talk a little bit about place training. We talk about place training a lot and why it's so important in many of our videos. And if you follow along on Instagram and Facebook, you probably see a lot of stories incorporating place training. We also mentioned the three D's of place training quite a bit. So uh, I wanna explain what those three D's really are. We have uh, distance, duration, and distractions. So once you start the process of clicker training your puppy to go onto a dog bed, now we can start expecting more, where we can send them from a greater distance, have them stay on that dog bed for longer, and then also stay there with distractions. As you can see, I've got two helpers with me today. I've got Vex and I've got Nyx, who are also on dog beds. Uh, these short hairs are very excitable dogs and one complaint that we get quite a bit is how hard it is to manage that excitement in the house, especially when things are happening, exciting things are happening, like family and friends coming over to the house, unloading the groceries, cooking dinner, any of those things can be pretty exciting because in short hairs lives, everything's pretty much exciting and everything can be considered a distraction. So if you can get a dog to be consistent and really condition these three Ds of place training, you're gonna have a much calmer, much more well-behaved bird dog in the house and everybody loves that. So to talk first about getting a dog to go to a dog bed or a climb stand or any place that you'd like them to go for that matter, we're gonna talk about distance. So uh, Legend is our young pup here. He's not even a year old yet. Uh, and then we've got our two veterans that are pretty rock st steady and solid. Of course, as soon as I say that, they'll make a liar out of me, Vex. Hey, all four feet on the dog bed, thank you. Um, so as soon as I say that, they'll make a liar out of me and this guy will look like a rock star. But we're gonna show you what working through the 3Ds of place training looks like with a young dog and help him work through some distractions. So first, I need to get him off his platform. So, Legend, okay. Okay. So we've been working a lot on place training um, and I may even switch up my platforms because um, as you can see, I've got different heights and different platforms. This climb stand with the tall legs is pretty tall. It's a pretty big transition down off the dog bed, which is what we want. It makes a dog second guess and think, hey, maybe I really shouldn't get off this spot. Being here is a good thing, being here is a safe thing, so maybe I should just stay here. And it makes them second guess that a lot. People ask us about dog beds all the time. Do I need the platform style? Or could I just get a soft pillow sided bed? And I always say those platform beds are going going to create a distinct boundary from being on the dog bed and being off the dog bed. So the more black and white you can make that, the easier it's going to be for your dog to understand the expectations. So I'm going to try and get him off his dog bed again. Okay. So let him off this time just a little bit. So I'm going to just be using vibrate on legend here and I'm going to send him from a well, I was gonna send him from a distance with the collar, didn't even ask the cue, didn't even push the button, and he anticipated, because like I said, we've been working on this a lot, which is what I wanna see, that he understands that this is a good place to be. You watching birds, buddy? Let's go, okay. So we're gonna try that again, just taking him away from the bed, then sending him to the bed. Legend kennel. As soon as he got on the bed, the vibration shut off. So I actually was able to use the collar that time. And I'm gonna go ahead and unclip the collar and put my easy lead bandolier style like I usually do, so it's out of my hands, out of my way, um, so that I can raise my arm and lower my arm when I'm using the collar and when I'm not, so that it's a little clearer for you guys that are watching. So again, I'm gonna take him off the bed. Okay, legend, with his release, okay. We'll let him walk around a little bit, sniff some things. Then again, I'm gonna send him from a distance. Legend Kennel, good boy. So he went right to his spot, got right back up on there, which is exactly what I wanted to see. Now, the other part of um, 
place training, the <laughs> I got some pigeons flying. Those are definitely a distraction. Um, but the other part that I wanted to talk about is duration. Duration is being able to expect these guys to stay on these dog beds for longer amounts of time without constant handling and correction and without having to stand right next to this little guy and babysit him either. So I'm going to take a few steps away and just demo that that can be expected. I'm not using the collar at all. It's just an expectation that he stays there now. I'm not gonna demo this for too long because hey, we don't all want this video to be 30 minutes long, but that's the expectation, is that once our dogs are good about being on our dog bed, they can stay there. So that they can stay there through dinner, they can stay there while you're watching a movie and not constantly be breaking off that bed and constantly needing to be handled and reminded. So once we're pretty solid with that, which it looks like all these guys are pretty good with that, then we can add some distractions. If these pigeons flying around already <laughs> weren't enough distraction, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these other guys and do a little bit of healing around Legend. Um, sometimes dogs, when they get to see another dog work or another dog get to do things, um, Letting another dog make some retrieves would be a huge distraction that I don't think this guy's quite ready for. It's definitely an advanced level of steadiness that we expect out of our dogs eventually. Um, but that would be kind of the epitome of distraction for this guy to have to stay on his dog bed through. So I'll go ahead and grab my Nixer boy. Heal. I'm just going to heal with him. And if Legend tries to break off his bed, I'm going to send him back. Uh, uh, Nix, heal. Buddy. You know how to do this. If Legend tries to bust off his bed, I'm gonna go ahead and send him back. Uh, the whole point of this is to be able to get to the point where I can have him stay there without constantly babysitting, constantly pushing the button, and constantly handling him. That's gonna make him a calm, enjoyable part of the family and being able to be out when there are high distractions and excitement happening. So I'm going to walk a little bit closer to him because, you know, dogs are social creatures and he may say, hey, Nix is walking right next to me. That's my release to get off as well. And it wasn't. He did a great job working through that. Kennel. Stay. So that looked great. I'm super excited and impressed with what Legend's showing me today. Um, I was hoping he would get a little more distracted by the other dogs doing some things and break off his bed so I could show you what helping him work through that looked like. But ultimately, this is our end goal. Well, not end goal, but one of our goals, because this guy's gonna go on to do a lot more steadiness training which these platforms can be a huge benefit for, um, having him stay there, watching retrieves, watching other dogs make retrieves. So as you can see, place training can be such a powerful training tool, such a powerful um, part of these dogs' lives because they can use place training to settle down in the house. You can see Vex is laid down and relaxed. Um, you can use these platforms for training sessions, which we're doing here in the yard now, as well as some of those more advanced training drills with the retrieving side of things. And then ultimately, you can use these type of place training behaviors with the three Ds of distance, duration, and distractions for hunting. If you're waterfall hunting and you need to be able to remotely send your dog to go get into their blind, there's your distance. Now you haven't seen birds for a while, so you need your dog to be able to stay there for a long amount of time, waiting for those next birds to come in. There's your duration. And then there's a lot going on. Other dogs making retrieves, birds coming in, shots happening. And you need your dog to be able to stay there through those distractions. So those are your three Ds of place training, all applied to a hunting situation. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. We're happy to answer those and we're so thankful for all of our subscribers. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and like, and thanks for watching. I'm Kat, the dog trainer. Mm -hmm.